Lift off. Here we go. Here we go. Good morning. This is Tuesday, June. I forgot my watch. It is Tuesday, June 26th, about 40 minutes before sunrise. So I'm testing out the settings on my long exposure for the streak shot of CRS 15 on Friday. It's gonna launch at like 5.41 a.m., which is just about 40 to 45 minutes before sunrise. So I'm just testing out with those same settings a couple days before launch, my settings, what, what I'm gonna be using, and, and so I know kind of ballpark what... Thanks, truck. So I know kind of ballpark what, uh, what settings I can use. And so I'm doing this here in Boston, and I don't really have time once I get to Cape Canaveral to go out for a sunrise that's not the launch. The first sunrise that I'll be out is launch day, so I'm trying to do a little bit of, a little bit of prep work. So the exposure time that I'm working with right now is actually giving me kind of a blown out sky there. You can see the, the I call them the blinkies, are giving me the warning that that part of the photo is overexposed. So where the rocket, I think I'm gonna want it horizontal going this way. I'm not sure if I'm going to have it uh, horizontal or vertically oriented yet, but it is giving me a warning. Stopping on my ride home for a little, uh, a little photo of the back bay skyline here. Let's see if we can find it over there. Let's see what it wow, that's beautiful. And just like that, we are in Florida. I think we're about to get on the bus and go put these down on the launch pad. It's still drizzling right now just a little bit, so we'll see how that goes. So remote camera setup was very rainy, making video challenging, but I was able to get some footage on my phone. My first camera is hopefully going to be a reflection shot here, if the puddle doesn't dry, we'll see. It's always a dash to get stuff set up on the pad. My other two cameras are a pretty standard wide photo on the right, and my third one on the left is a tight shot of the base of the pad, underexposed, kind of like an engine shot. Hoping for the best on all of these. I try to leave enough time to hang out, enjoy the view, and see what other photographers have in mind for their photos, but it doesn't always work out. Time to get some dinner, get to bed, because I've got a 3.30 a.m. wake up call in the morning. Good morning, good morning. I am, uh set up for the launch. It's about 5.12 right now, so just exactly exactly a half an hour from launch right now. Right now. Whew. Nervous. A dragon's gonna be delivering about 6,000 pounds, I believe, of cargo. I'm here at Marina Park in Titusville, kind of overlooking the Max Brewer Bridge, and gonna try and get a streak shot. There's a palm tree I have positioned about yay in the frame and the rocket I'm going to try and get it to streak over over the palm tree so I've been here for about 45 minutes setting up my cameras it's always a fun sign to come upon when you're uh, walking in the grass around a pond with a headlamp I guess just starting to see morning twilight just a very little hint you can just kind of tell where the horizon is so I'll show you what my cameras look like here I'm using 5D here. I've got some hand warmers rubber banded to them. This is a 16 to 35 on it. And let's see if you can see the palm tree at all. Let me walk up to it. So here's the tree right there. Here's the Max Brewer Bridge right here. And then from back this way over by the cameras, we should get the rocket to kind of come right up over here. Here's the palm tree kind of dimly go right over there and then right off into that way. So I planned the streak out with a tool called Flight Club. Declan Murphy, who I found on Reddit, came up with it and put a little star map on the actual field of view. I'll show you what that looks like in like the web, the web app, excuse me, right now. And I'll give you a link in the description. It basically tells you where the, in the constellations, what constellations the streak will fly through. All you have to do is just frame up like an astrophoto, just like you're gonna take a picture of the stars, except you're just waiting for the rocket to fly through it. It makes it really, really easy to plan out kind of heights and and where you're going to be. So using a combination of Flight Club from Declan and the Photographer's Ephemeris TPE, um, I, can, I can figure out which of those orange pylons over there 
I can figure out which one is where the rocket's gonna come up over. So I think it's gonna be this one, two, three, four, five. I think it's gonna be this sixth one. Between five and six for sure. My second camera here is my 7D. I've got a 10 to 18 more hand warmers. Hopefully stuff staying dry, let's see. Yes, all good. No dew. Basically just keeping the lens warm enough. Keep it above that dew point essentially. Very rudimentary way of doing it. Some hot hands, rubber bands. The last thing that's left to do is to get my settings dialed in. So I'm gonna do, I think about a two and a half minute exposure on this one. And then on this one, which is like my backup, because I know those settings will be safe. On this one, I'm gonna do closer to three and a half, maybe four minutes down here. All right, so I have to keep my headlamp off, but camera one and camera two are both firing those little lights right there. That's two minutes, 30 seconds. So hopefully the rocket's gonna streak right on through here. You can just see first light there. This one is gonna be safe. This one's gonna be, I switched them. So as I told you before, this one was gonna be the long one at like three minutes something. And the other one was gonna be 2.30 to be safe. I'm putting the safe one on the 7D and I'm putting the long one on the 5D because it's more capable. So hopefully I might, if, if I blow something out a little bit, I might be able to Excuse me, pull it back, sorry. I am really nervous, excited, and getting eaten alive all at once. Um, that person is gonna need to turn off their headlights. Uh, we got clean glass, no dew. Let me see if I can get the light around there. No dew there, uh, no dew there. I think we're good. I think this just might work. I had to run over and ask that gentleman to turn his headlights off. He was very kind. Engine chill has started. One final test shot at uh, the same interval as the, so like four, I'm gonna take a four minute exposure. I'm gonna take one about five minutes before launch. Make sure it looks good and then wait for another minute until launch. And hopefully it's good to go. Hopefully. Oh, the nerves are real. Woo. RP1 is closed out, so that means the first stage uh, liquid kerosene, sorry, I can't think straight, is closed out. So I need to start this exposure at 37.41. We got a minute and 10 seconds. I'm gonna put the camera right behind me over here on the gorilla pod, excuse me, and uh, just record what's what's about to happen. Hopefully it works. All right, we are one minute from launch. One minute. One minute! I'm gonna put the camera here. Uh, where do I put it? No, I put it right here. Those are the two cameras. Go for launch. Go for launch. We are go for launch. Oh my God. Woo! Thirty seconds. Lift off. Here we go. Here we go. Let's do this. There it comes right up over the uh, right up over that sixth tower. Here we go. Wow. Holy cow, look at that. Go Falcon 9, go Dragon. <sighs> Telemetry and power nominal. This is everything a photographer dreams for. <laughs> Sunrise, rocket launch. Now we just wait for the launch, or wait for the sound. I can't think straight. Arcing over, right over the top of the tree. Let's see how it looks from down here. Look at that, it's arcing right over the tree. <laughs> Declan, you are a boss. Let's see what it looks like again. I don't want to touch the... Hopefully it doesn't go out of the frame. I didn't aim up that high. I don't think it should. That would be a, that would be, that would suck. That would really suck. I think we should be okay. Look at that, right over the top of it. 
arcing right over. Here comes the sound. Cameras are going, cameras are going, here in the rumble. Oh my god, that's amazing. All right, I've got, I gotta take pictures now. I'm gonna put you down. Go, take another one. Stage step. Here comes the weirdness. There it is. Good morning. There it is. It's doing it just like Iridium 4. Oh, it's so exciting. Wow. No way. Yes! Look at that. There's the streak shot. Woo! We did it! Right over the tree. Holy smokes, man. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my god, I can't be more excited right now. <laughs> I can't wait to see this other picture. This was the backup. This wasn't even the real one. My heart is racing. My heart is racing. I need to run. I need to move. Holy cow. That was crazy. Look at that. Look at that atmospheric whatever. That is just amazing. All right, here is the streak shot again. Holy smokes, man. Not even a little bit of overexposure. Not one bit. Not even right here. Just packing up the camera, the cameras now. Before I get eaten alive. Here's a picture on the other one. Let's see if it'll expose. So that's, this is the backup. This is the backup camera. <laughs> Holy crap, man. Getting eaten alive. Please go away. Don't bother me. I'm just trying to take a photo. Look at this. So. My tripod legs are absolutely soaked in the dew. I don't know if you can see that. That's why I use those hand warmers because otherwise the front of the lenses would look like that too and it totally would have ruined the picture. Just packing up. Man, what a, what a ride of emotion because yesterday at like, I don't know, two o'clock or something, they were talking about some issue with the thermal something on Dragon and I was like, oh man. This is, I, I come all this way and I have that feeling every time. You fly and drive and plan all this stuff and then a little issue screws you. But not today, not today. Perseverance is key and we did it. This is what I was meant to do. Literally bring my suitcase full of stuff out here so that I make sure I had everything because in past, you forget something in the car, or you forget something in your hotel room, or you forget something, I don't know, somewhere else. So I wasn't messing around for the 11th launch or 12th launch, I think this is of mine. I wasn't messing around. I am uh, I'm bringing the whole kit because I'm not forgetting anything because that picture is the result of lots of learning. I'm glad I decided to come off base for once change up the location, kind of challenge yourself. There was one of Dustin's videos recently with the card. He shot it with uh, the Phantom. He put his own style on the Edgerton shot. I think this morning, Dustin asked a question of, are you doing your own thing? Or are you kind of copying others? I'm doing my own thing. I can't believe this morning. This is crazy. This is like a dream. I'm like pinching myself, making sure this is real. Alright, let's 
see how we fared. How did we do? It's still firing. As you can see there, we're one for one. Probably pretty blown out. Well, it fired, but it just didn't do what I wanted to do. That still looks pretty neat. Maybe I'll just do one like that of the flame or something. I don't know. See how he did over here. Looks like the puddle is gone. Unfortunately, let's see how he did. There we go. All right. So this camera worked too. I consider that a success. Look at that. Look at the uh, exhaust there coming up on the. After that, we headed back to the press site started cataloging our photos, and I headed off to the airport. On my way back to Boston, we were flying over northern Florida, southern Georgia, kind of in that area, and we had to maneuver around this massive anvil cloud and thunderstorm. I had never seen that from the air before. All right, that's it for this video. I wanted to give a special shout out to those people who are supporting me monthly on Patreon. They let me uh, go to these launches. They allow me to, to make content and photos and videos like this. Um, so I'll leave a link below if you'd like to become a patron. Uh, certain levels get the high-res pictures that I took and, and shared in this video. So I'll leave links to those below. I'll leave links to uh, the Flight Club and uh, the Photographer's Ephemeris, which I use to plan out these shots. I like to do videos uh, about those tools, about Flight Club. Uh, one kind of a deep dive about the Photographer's Ephemeris. So if you want to see something like that, um, Give this video a like. Hit subscribe down below if you want to be notified about those videos and uh, you think I earned it. Uh, that would mean the world. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.